वर्षा मिरानी लीडर्स डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ऑर्थोडोंटिक एंड चेयरमैन फॉर साइंस कमिटी एंड जीवा पाटिल डेंटल स्कूल वो लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑल आई सी नो टुडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग नेशनल ओरल पैथोलॉजी डे सेलिब्रेशन वी आर डिलाइट ग्रुप है आपको भी नहीं नहीं can you please mute your speaker so that i am audible okay so as we all know today we are celebrating national oral pathologist day so as a part of this celebration we are delighted to have with us dr nupura ma'am hod department of oral pathology at krishna college karan i would now request dr rucha gore secretary scientific committee to give a brief introduction about this day and to take this session forward <laughs> very warm welcome to all of you we department of oral pathology and microbiology dy patel dental school pune are celebrating national oral pathologies day this day was instituted by indian association of oral and maxillofacial pathology on 25th of feb in the memory of late dr hm dolakia sir he was the first oral pathologist of our country he has dedicated more than 50 years in teaching oral pathology in the view of this day we have organized a webinar on the topic kindling a passion for oral pathology a curiosity driven journey by dr nupura vibhute ma'am now i would like to uh, hand over the dais to our hod dr prasad karande sir to please introduce our today's guest speaker dr nupura vibhute ma'am thank you sir for the event but before that i would like to share a quote by apj abdul kalam my message especially to young people is to have courage to think differently courage to invent courage to travel unexpected path courage to discover the impossible and to conquer the problems and succeed <laughs> can you please mute yourselves everyone please mute yourself दोनो वेस्टे झालेले द यंगर जनरेशन बिलोंगिंग टू द फॅमिली ऑफ ओरल पॅथोलॉजिस्ट शुड टेक अप द अबव कोर्ट एंड स्टार्ट मार्चिंग फॉरवर्ड विथ अ पॉझिटिव्ह माइंड रादर देन ग्रम्बलिंग टू फॉल बॅक एंड थिंकिंग दॅट दे डोंट हॅव ब्राईट फ्युचर इन ओरल पॅथोलॉजी क्वालिफाइड बी एज ओरल पॅथोलॉजिस्ट ऑलवेज हॅव अ स्लाइट एज ओव्हर अदर्स बिकॉज वी नो and are capable of understanding when a cell is crying and how it is coping with the body system to overcome when there is an untoward happening to the living system the history also has shown how successful are the practicing oral pathologists in the society with this i would like to introduce our eminent resource person of the day dr nupura vibhute ma'am who will kindle or should i say rekindle our passion in the journal journey of oral pathology she is currently professor and head in department of oral pathology and microbiology school of dental sciences krishna institute of medical sciences deemed to be university karat she has completed her graduation from pravara medical trust rural dental college loni and post graduation from bharti vidyapeeth dental college pune and is currently pursuing her phd she is a post graduate teacher and guide and also examiner and moderator for pro post graduate and undergraduate exams at various universities she has authored two books has been granted three copyrights from government of india and more than 70 national and international publications to her credit she has a special interest in forensic odontology and dental education technology she is a popular teacher and an avid writer ma'am we welcome you all thank you dean sir for giving us this opportunity ma'am over to you thank you for those kind words dr prasad shall i start my screen share yes ma'am I think you will have to enable first screen sharing by me. Yes.
Is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So good afternoon and greetings from School of Dental Sciences, Kara. First of all, let me thank the entire organizing team, respected Dean Shigli sir, the dynamic head of department, Dr. Prasad Karande, Varsha ma'am, Dr. Mrunal, Dr. Rucha, and the entire team for this inv invitation. I've been told that this is the last session of the day. So let me keep it enjoyable and as relaxed as possible. Dr. Prasad, kindly let me know if my enthusiasm gets better of me for the time. Okay, so let's start. So right at the beginning when we were discussing topic or theme for this lecture today, we went through the regular things. Should we take a particular disease or a group of diseases like odontogenic tumors or fibrosis lesions or even discuss some diagnostic techniques or the COVID pandemic. But when I was told that the target audience is especially undergraduate students, we thought why not introduce these budding professionals to our subject of oral pathology from a completely different perspective. Now, if you see traditionally, when we say the subject oral pathology, what comes to our mind is a department where the teachers have an extreme attention to details, isn't it? So the I is to be dotted and the T is to be crossed. Why this cell is not oval? Why is it rounded? Why the nucleus is not hyperchromatic? Things like that. At other times, it is the hematoxylin and eosin pencils that bring us very painful memories of sharpening them and then having them stay in our aprons. And the best of all, the mystery of what we see under the microscope. We have learned quite a lot from our students who have been able to diagnose what is microscopically seen even without looking in the microscope. We are all guilty of that, isn't it? identifying a slide, looking at the shape of cover slip, so on and so forth. So now we thought, jokes apart, why not reintroduce the subject today from a completely new perspective? And there could not have been a better day than today as we celebrate National Oral Pathologist Day to commemorate the birth anniversary of Dr. H.M. Dolakia sir, who is the first and foremost oral pathologist, a teacher of teachers and a stalwart in oral pathology. So let's start this journey by kindling a passion for oral pathology as a curiosity driven journey. So let's start at the beginning. And what is pathology? We are all aware that it is a combination of two words, pathos and logy, which is nothing but a study of pain and suffering. However, it is much more than that. If you see the definition given by Robbins in their latest edition, it says that pathology is the study of structural, biochemical, and functional changes in the cells, tissues, and organs that underlie the disease. Now, this is very important. We are looking at not only what we see clinically in the patients, but what is happening underneath. We'll come back to this later when we'll discuss this in detail. So pathology is nothing but a bridge between the basic sciences and clinical medicine. And if I have to take it further, I would say it's the foundation for all the healthcare practices. So where did it all start? Well, the evolution of pathology can be traced to as old as the disease itself. And that means right from where the man was. We have come a long way. In the beginning, all the disease processes were attributed to the wrath of God. People thought it is something that they did wrong and God has punished them. But today we know with our modern advances that it is completely different from this. And if we see the history, we have these famous people who worked hard, who pursued this pathology with passion. Taking the example of Hippocrates, a Greek physician and to whom we attribute our Hippocrates oath. He thought that the disease is nothing but a balance between the four humors, the blood, the yellow bile, the black bile, and the phlegm. If we see in the Indian context, father of Ayurveda, Charka, attributed it to a combination or rather a movement, vat, transformation, pitta, and lubrication and stability cuff. However, this was at the beginning of understanding the disease process. 
Over the years, scientific knowledge has helped us to refine our understanding of pathology. Take the example of Carl von Rockintensky, who championed the use of autopsy in the study of medicine. After his great findings, now teaching of medicine has changed to a science and not just a tradition. Similarly, Edward Jenner, an English physician who pioneered the smallpox vaccine, which was the first vaccine in the world. He has probably saved more lives than any other man in the history of time. But all this became extremely irrelevant when we come to the microscopic era. With the advent of microscope in the 19th century, a whole new world of possibilities opened up. And we owe it to Sir Rudolf Virchow, who is the greatest figure in the history of pathology and who is rightly called as father of cellular pathology for using microscope for tissue analysis. Pathology thus started emerging as a separate academic speciality. After that, we have many, many milestones. By the end of 19th century, it was experimental medicine, electron microscopy in the 20th century, where we thought that cell is the final. Now we have atoms. Now we have genes and molecules. We know the double-stranded DNA structure. And finally, we have come to an era of genomics. But what drew these people to have a simple branch of pathology now specialized into innumerable pathologies in itself? We have the cytopathology, the histopathology, microbiology, molecular pathology, immunology, hematology, forensic pathology, or oh, the list goes on and on. Hello. Ha, but what has been the pursuing factor in all these great pathologists? I think Sir Einstein said it very well. I have no special talent, he said. I'm only passionately curious. So what unites all these great stalwarts in the history of medicine has been being passionate about study and being curious about the happenings. Okay, so let me tickle your brains now and let us see how we can put this practice of pathology in our everyday practice. Can you identify this important term in pathology? You can use the chat box to answer. It is nothing but a puzzle which you can decode and tell me the answer. What's the new book? You can put your answer in the chat box. Yes, I think Dr. Zadav has got it right. It is nothing but carcinogenesis. Yes, I see many people answering now. Good. So basically, when we decode each figure, we get carcinogenesis. Now let me discuss about cancer and how pathology has contributed to the clinician in oncology. Now as a pathologist, when I see cancers under microscope, after so many years also, they still continue to surprise me. No two cancers are the same. Even if the diagnosis is same, for example, well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, no two cancers will ever be the same. And they definitely are a mystery for the clinician as well. Now, when we see few decades back, the diagnosis of cancer was based on pure histomorphology. And we knew maybe 30 to 40 disease subtypes. But today, with our newer technologies, we have cracked the genetic code for cancer. And the disease subtypes have increased to maybe 200 to 300. So what does this mean to the, to the clinician? Well, it means a better quality of life because previously everything was treated with toxic chemotherapy. With this special understanding, we have come to what is called as precision therapy. New adjoint treatment, targeted drugs, and immunotherapy. All this has contributed to a better quality of life simply because 
Now, the treatment is directed towards specific cancer cells and it spares the other healthy cells and the immunity of the individual. This better quality of life is extremely important to the cancer survivor as it helps them to lead as near normal life as possible. So now let us go to something before cancer in the oral cavity. We are all aware that we have a whole range of potentially malignant disorders, which used to be previously called as pre-malignant lesions and pre-malignant conditions. And when they are seen in the clinics, we wonder why they appear white. Here I have two representative pictures. One is for leukoplakia and one is for oral squamous cell. One is for oral submucous fibrosis. Now, a favorite question among teachers is, why do these white lesions appear white? Now, the answer goes back to what I told you earlier. Let us go and see what is beneath this at the cellular level. Because as it is above, so it is below. So, if we see leukoplakia under the microscope, what we encounter is hyperkeratosis and hyperplasia. All this changes the normal coral pink color to it appearing white. Is it the same reason in oral submucous fibrosis? No. Here there is no hyperkeratosis, nor is there hyperplasia. In fact, in advanced cases, you actually have epithelial atrophy. And what is the reason oral submucous fibrosis will appear white? Well, if you see the slide, you will come to know that there is fibrosis and hypovascularity and finally hyalinization. What this does is it masks the underlying vasculature leading to a white appearance. Thus, we have seen if we understand the underlying pathology, histopathology, we are able to understand the pathogenesis and the clinical appearance as well. Now, let me show you another example. We will talk about the vesiculobulous lesions. We all know that pemphigus and pemphigoid both are blistering diseases. But why are blisters of pemphigoid stronger than that of pemphigus? When you see these lesions in the clinic, the pemphigus lesions have blisters which are fragile. And many a time, by the time they come to us, it is already, we do not have an intact blister. But when you come to pemphigoid, many a times you encounter an intact blister, something like this. Now, if we were to find out the reason behind it, we have to apply the same principle and go back and correlate it with its histopathology. So on correlating, we find that the split in case of pemphigus is supra-basilar split. Thus, what we have at the roof of the blister is a very thin layer of epithelium. What about in case of pemphigoid? Here, the split is subepithelial. So what we have at the roof of the blister is a very thick or many layers of epithelium. And that is why the blister most of the times will appear intact. So we have seen these seemingly simple explanations for complex pathologies. Once we understand the pathogenesis behind it, it can help us in giving a good diagnosis and further planning the treatment for these patients. So working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. And working hard for something we love is called passion. A famous quote by Simon Sinek, the author of Start With Why. And I think start with why and being curious about pathology is going to pay rich dividends when we start our clinical practice. Let us see if we can apply to the biggest problem of all, that is slight identification and interpretation. So ha I have another puzzle for you here. Please be free to use the chat box to answer. So the question is, just take a look at the slide and try to identify the student X. As expected, it is very difficult to identify X because you don't know if X is a boy or a girl. 
Now, if I put this, now can I have any guesses? Yes. Excellent. So you are able to identify now. Let us see how. When I said X is a girl as the first line, you eliminated all these possibilities. When I said blue shoes, further possibilities got narrowed down. Dress is in a shade of hematoxylin and eosin. And finally, the person is a blonde. So what is the difference between slide one and the second slide? The answer is in the information. Once you know what X looked like, it definitely helped you in identification. Till you had no idea what X looked like, even though it was right in front of you, you could not identify it at all. There is a famous quote in pathology, which says the eyes cannot see what the mind does not know. Or the way I like to put it, the eyes can only see what the mind knows. So if you are able to know how a cell looks like, what is the nucleus, what is the cytoplasm, what is the pattern of the tissue arrangement, you are going to definitely be able to identify the slide once it is seen under the microscope. Till you don't know how the cell is supposed to look, even if it is there in the slide, you are definitely going to see everything just as pink and blue and not be able to give a definite diagnosis. Now that you are all warmed up, let me pose a rather difficult question. Now you have to identify another X in this slide. This is a still from one of the famous Hindi movies. Any guesses? Excellent, great work. So if I put it under higher magnification, there you are. Now, just see the difference. You are seeing a slide where there is absolutely no color, just shades of white. And you have been able to come at a definitive diagnosis. All this is possible because you had seen, heard, or known about him previously. So I think I can rest my case here. Where whatever is in your mind is definitely going to be seen in the slide. Let us continue with our journey now because curiosity is the compass that leads us to our passions. Follow it and you won't be disappointed. The future definitely belongs to the curious. So now we have seen how applying this curious mind and being passionate about understanding of the disease can help us not only to see the slides in the, under the microscope, but also to understand the disease in the clinic sector as well. Has it been done in history before? Oh, well, definitely, yes. Let me see, let me show you an example of how being passionately curious led to one of the most important breakthroughs mm -hmm. in the history of diseases. And that brings me to a story of a delayed flight, a delayed flight which changed and proved to be a landmark in the study of cancer. So where did this take place? We start our story with Dr. Dennis Burkett. He was a physician in Africa and had encountered a child with a huge jaw swelling. Upon taking history, he came to know that it was a very aggressive lesion and had developed very quickly over a period of time. He had never heard of it before, nor seen any similar case. Within a few days, many such patients in the nearby areas were examined by him and that set him thinking what the probable cause could be. On a visit to England, 
in one of or during one of his holidays he gave a guest lecture this lecture was attended by dr anthony epstein dr Ep epstein was a very curious person and had a great passion for pathology hearing about this mysterious illness he decided to investigate it he requested dr burkett for samples and dr burkett kept sending samples from africa all the way to england this continued for 3 years every time the samples came dr anthony examined them tried to see what is the possible cause but it did not lead to any conclusive evidence till one fine day when fate stepped in and the flight got delayed the flight was rerouted and by the time dr anthony received the samples it looked very cloudy he was really disappointed and thought that this life, that the specimen has become contaminated but being the passionate curious fellow that he was he thought why not take a look under the microscope and lo behold what he saw was viral particles inside these cells and a proliferation of these viral a proliferation of these cells which were later identified to be as the burkitt's lymphoma so dr anthony epstein with his student dr bar investigated the virus and it came to be known as the epstein bar virus and the disease was named as burkitt's lymphoma now why this event is so significant well it was the first time that the viral role in oncogenesis was proposed till that time there was no association of any virus with cancer this significant event changed our understanding of cancer and has since then proved to be a significant landmark in understanding the pathogenesis of how cancer develops and helped us in planning a treatment plan so a pursuit of pursuit based on curiosity and passion coupled with with hard work has helped us wave a significant way in saving the mankind so now that we have seen that this has been applied in history what about the diagnostic techniques we are all aware of the simple diagnostic techniques like blood investigations and exfoliative cytology today we have developed many modern technologies especially during the pandemic time so let me tell you another story about a diagnostic technique and that is a frozen section this one invention by itself has proved to be a major boon in treating and diagnosing cancer and surprisingly the inspiration came from freezing weather so the story starts here with dr louis wilson dr wilson was a very passionate curious scientific person who was just nominated as chief of pathology at a new job as we all know the process from pathology to diagnosis is a very long and tedious one once the sample is taken it has to be fixed processed then embedded finally sectioned and stained even though we have modern equipment now which makes the process faster remember at that time things were very tedious and it would be a matter of many many days before the diagnosis could be reached one day his employer dr william mayo a surgeon exclaimed i wish you pathologists would find a way to tell us surgeons whether a growth is cancer or not while the patient is still on the table this would be significant because it would help us not only to determine the malignancy as well but provide us with a excellent biopsy and possible treatment at the same visit thinking about this dr william thinking about dr william's words he set to work and the inspiration came from cold weather he just left a tissue outside window to freeze one day to see if it could be cut and lo behold it definitely worked he def he went through each step and fine tuned each and every step of making frozen sections and staining and today what we have are frozen sections an important tool for intra operative decisions 
This highlights the role that pathology has to play in the correct decision-making process during surgery and has saved many lives as well. So now we have seen what has been done. Let us see what we can do now. And that brings me to the last part of my presentation. That is, welcome to the digital age of pathology. In the pandemic, we have all seen the effect of what online resources can do. It is not that they did not exist before, but just that we have become more aware of them now and have been introduced to them in a whole new way. The younger generation today is probably more techno savvy than us, very active on social media as well. So you are aware of all these resources that exist. Take, for example, the platforms like Swayam and NPTEL. They offer n number of courses which, are, which can cater to every student and their needs. You can choose a study. You can choose the timing of the study. You can decide and pace, go back and revise, and even give the exam online. What about the other things on social media? Today, social media, even though it is blamed for so many things, is definitely a treasure trove for giving us the best knowledge that happens all over the world. The two sites which I'm going to quote here are my favorites. One is the Pathodoodles. It is by Dr. Diksha Sikri. And this is just an example of what she does. This is a post by her where all the pseudoisms of pathology have been discussed very nicely. And she has named it the lies we tell each other. It talks about things like pseudostratified epithelium and the other tumors where the word pseudo is. Another site which I particularly enjoy is Understanding Pathology by Dr. Pramod, by Pranav Pramod Patwardhan. Sir is a great mentor to students and his way of teaching and learning is through algorithms, anecdotes, and simple point answers for commonly asked questions. I have put these sites to inspire the young students to explore many avenues that exist today in the social media. So now what is the way ahead? We have seen what was there. We have seen how passionately driven pathologists have played an important role and changed the face of time. What can we do? Today, as we stand at crossroads, we see that the future of oral pathology is can be any of these possibilities. You can do a practice which is driven by pathology, understanding the processes better and helping to treat the patient in a simple manner, which is cost effective as well. You can go into teaching. Teaching is no longer in restricted to institutes. Online teaching and videos are a great means of learning and teaching as well. Research is another avenue which is excellent for a budding oral pathologist. Research can be, can be in association with big firms as well as you can go into writing about literature as well as being associated with many companies. The diagnostic field is opening every single day. When we have uh, instruments like lab on a chip, it is definitely something that is going to revolutionize the world. During the COVID pandemic, we have all understood the importance of diagnostics. And then finally, there are the super specialities. You can go into oncopathology and become a specialist in that and play your role in many cancer institutes. And finally, the role of interdisciplinary. Nowadays, even though we have become oral pathology specialists, we can definitely collaborate with other specialists to give what is the best for the patient. These were some of the traditional means or avenues for the pathology. But in modern times, you can chart new avenues. Teleoral pathology and startups are the way to go for the future. Just for example, this is one of my students, Dr. Vidhi, who has come up with an app called Dental Dose. It is an excellent app and helps many students and get, helps many patients in getting diagnosis about oral lesions. It has also provided employment to many budding dental practitioners as well. 
Uh, the latest one in the field of pathology is what is known as digital slides. Simply put, it is nothing but histology slides, which have been scanned with a digital scanner and then have been converted into digital slides. Previously, whenever a slide is got for an opinion, it is restricted to one particular area. What if you want to take a second opinion? Well, you had to take those slides and send them across to the location and have the pathologist there examine the slides. What was tiring here was not only the cost, but most important was the delay encountered in this transport. With, digital, with these digital slides now, you can have image analysis, you can have deep learning with algorithms, and you can convert many tasks at the same time. You can have simultaneous viewing of pathologists from all across the globe. You can also utilize analysis where tedious work like monitoring the tumor extent or say, for example, number of mitosis count can be done and delegated with this deep learning with algorithms. But best of all, it has helped to reduce the inter-observer variability. This has been significant in the in determining new classifications and detection of many lesions. Finally, I come to the end with just a message that let curiosity and passion for pathology be a part of your life. Get inspired from everything around you for it is this curiosity and passion that is going to take you on higher levels. Whenever we like or do something, for example, if you are interested in sports or interested in say movies, we are definitely looking for all possible information without anybody directing us to do so. Why not do the same for pathology and enjoy the benefits for life? In the end, I'm very grateful to all my teachers, friends, family, especially my family here at School of Dental Sciences for helping me throughout and pro providing a source of inspiration. I leave you all with the last slide. This was my entry for one of the international uh, competitions where pathology art was being discussed. So just a cystic lining, which has transformed into a beauty for beauty lies in the eyes of beholder. Thank you. Dr. Prasad. Yes, madam. Thank you, ma'am, for arousing the hidden passion amongst all the audience through your extremely inspiring lecture today, madam. Actually, whatever you have told, to be curious, I was just thinking ki, how much curiosity we have. And you have inspired us. Basically, supposedly we are doing a carving. By carving, galat ho raha hai. So let us start from the beginning. Let's be curious. Ki, kyu galat ho raha hai? कि मैं एक इंप्रेशन ले रहा हूं बार बार और उस पर वो इंप्रेशन ठीक से नहीं आ रहा है इट इज नॉट गेटिंग प्रॉपरली इम्प्रिंटेड सो वॉट इज रॉन्ग आई शुड टेक इट प्रॉपरली माई मटीरियल इज रॉन्ग वॉट इज रॉन्ग वी टू बी क्यूरियस कि भाई मैं मिक्सिंग जब कर रहा हूँ अल्जीनेट इज माई मोशन वॉट एवर आई एम यूजिंग दैट इज इट रॉन्ग और इज दैट वॉटर पाउडर रेशियो रॉन्ग और इज इट द सेटिंग पाउडर रॉन्ग और इज दैट एक्सपायर्ड एक्स एक्स वाइज एट it is not about anything uh, carving or this thing it, you have to be curious and yes madam you have definitely and definitely ignited the curiosity amongst us madam now thank you uh, thanks a lot madam thanks dean sir for giving us this opportunity of presenting a, a webinar also we had conducted a quiz today and thanks a lot for this opportunity thanks a lot sir for your vision now i request dr mrinal madam to kindly share the certificate of appreciation for dr nupura madam this is our uh, dean sir's vision where we ha he has told to present a certificate online and we would be giving you the hard copy also uh, now madam will take over brunal ma'am on to you Audible. On behalf of Dewey Patel Dental School, 
on the occasion of National Oral Pathologist Day, I would like to deliver the vote of thanks. It's my honor and pleasure to extend a very heartful vote of thanks to our honorable guest speaker, Dr. Nupura Vibhute ma'am, for her valuable thoughts on oral pathology and for sharing her knowledge. I am sure our students must have benefited from this amazing session. Thank you, ma'am, for enriching our students with your knowledge. I would like to thank respected Dean Sir for his leadership and vision and for always supporting us for organizing such events. My heartfelt thanks to Scientific Committee Chairman, Dr. Varsha Mirani, ma'am, and Secretary, Dr. Pratik Sir and Dr. Rucha. I would like to thank the Head of Department of Oral Pathology, Dr. Prasad Sir, for his constant guidance and motivation. My thanks to non-teaching staff for their untiring efforts. Thank you all the students for their active participation, not only in the webinar, but also for the quiz competition and for the model making competition and for your patient hearing. Special thanks to our interns, Aditya, Ashwin, Niranjan and Arush and all the interns for making this event successful by helping us throughout the organizing of this event. I once again, thank you all. Thank you.